Hello, I'm Sinclair Adam, Trials Director for Penn State Extension. And here we are standing in the perennial area where we do in-ground three-year hardiness testing and plant evaluation. Plants are brought in from all over the place and they wind up getting planted in a series of beds over the course of time. They stay with us for three seasons, three winters they experience, and then they are retired from the program. These plants are put in with organic material at the root system. They're on a trickle water system, and they also get feed as needed. Otherwise, we don't do a lot for maintenance other than deadheading and cutting back and that sort of thing. So they're really, uh, as a homeowner, would grow them pretty much. <clears throat> These plants come to us from a myriad of sources, as I said, and we get some really wonderful entries. This year, we have a good deal of echinaceas in the program. We also have a fair number of heucheras, as well as some more odd cultivars. We have a nice, interesting eryngium from must-have perennials, for example, and some uh, overseas contributions that are really interesting as well. So <clears throat> plants grown in this system are uh, brought in and they're potted into four-inch pots and then planted out in this system that you see here. We trial these plants and we're evaluating for the same criteria we do in the containers, uniformity, flowering, foliar quality, and overall growth. Those numbers are averaged, they're rated four times a year, and all this data is put up on our website so that you can visit the trials without actually being here, which is helpful this year. We're going to start off in the sun area right now and then a little bit later we'll go over and look at the plants that are being tested in the shade. Shade cloth is 50 percent and that's typical for what we do with the annual container plants as well as the perennial in-ground plants. All these plants are retired after three years of growth and usually wind up as part of the permanent display here at the research station or in the hands of master gardeners who have volunteered their time to help assist with the program. Let's get started. This little gem is an Achillea, and it's entered by Concept Plants into our program. This has a very small flower size and a very compact habit. It's most intriguing and would make a great plant for edging in a perennial garden. One of the nice things about this Achillea is it's continuing to bloom strongly here in the middle part of August. We've seen some very interesting Achilleas in this program over the years, uh, but we have three that are particularly remarkable in the trials right now. This is Achillea Millie Rock Rose and Millie Rock Red from Darwin Perennials, and Achillea Firefly Sunshine from Walter's Gardens. All of these were blooming quite nicely in June and July. They've been cut back, but uh, they're starting to throw up buds again, so we'll get some rebloom. So in front of me here is Budlia Butterfly Gold. Um, it's a new introduction from Must Have Perennials, a division of Aris Greenleaf, which is actually just 15 minutes down the road from us here in Lancaster. I really am digging this plant. It has good variegation of green and gold. It has gorgeous little light blue lavender flowers, um, still coming on flowering, fairly compact in its first year, but we'll see how it performs over the next three years. Well, there are more than a few cultivars of Caryopteris on the market. This is one from Darwin, this gold crest, which is really a striking difference in foliage. I'm sorry it's not blooming for you just now, but I will tell you there are buds forming along the stem and it should be in bloom shortly. Really nice plant, no problem overwintering it, and of course this wonderful gold color with a blue flower is going to show very, very well. This year we're pleased to have installed these eight threadleaf Coreopsis types that Doom and Orange has provided. And there's some really intriguing colors in this range. This one particularly, with its lovely rose petal edges and cream and yellow center. A smashing color and something really new to Coreopsis. I think highly of it. We're going to watch these over the next three years, and I do hope they all make it through the winters. In addition to the others we've talked about, here's a really very floriferous one. Nice rich gold color, uh, sort of dark, a little bit of orange tint to it. Lots of buds and this wonderful compact habit. This is a real star. 
Another uh, introduction from the Fall Sensation Numbered line is this reddish orange color. It is just striking. Um, you know, it's kind of a dark burgundy orange. Um, it's performing really well. There was a lot of flowers. It could use a deadheading here now, but um, I think it's going to perform really well and we'll see how it looks coming up in the next couple years. And here's a wonderful two plant series of uh, Coreopsis that Duman has entered as well. These are a little more broadleaf than the threadleaf types. They're very compact. This is the Lemoncello series, and we have Lemoncello and Lemoncello Gold. And they're really striking colors. Lots of flower power. These things have been blooming their heads off since the end of June, and I expect they'll continue looking at the bud count on into the month of September. Okay, I'm not lying down on the job, but I wanted you to get an impression of how compact and diminutive the stature of these Delospermums really is. This is the Solstice series. Here we have Solstice Rose and Solstice Red. Really good plants, great performance, and a lot of flower power. So Doom and Orange did a fantastic job with these, and I think they're wonderful to grow. Here's a really nice series of chrysanthemums, or actually dendrothemas, uh, from must-have perennials. This is the Igloo series. They're so named because of their compact habit, and no pruning, no pinching, no PGRs have been used on these plants whatsoever, and they're just starting to fire up in their bloom. This is Fire Dance Igloo, and here is Ice Pink Igloo, and both of these are really good plants. Wonderful habit, loaded with color, and they'll bloom into mid-September. So here in front of me, I have um, Dianthus Mountain Frost Ruby Snow from Darwin Perennials. It is, it's a small compact plant right now in its first year. I think it would look really great in a border and a rock garden. And something to mention, uh, two things actually, is number one, it's still blooming here in the third week of August. Um, the other thing is the Mountain Frost series has performed very well for us over many years um, with little dieback and winter kill off. So I think we're gonna have a good, a good showing on this one as well. From our friends at American Taki, this wonderful digitalis has come into the program this year. We actually had it here last year as a container entry, and it was really a statuesque plant with a lot of flower power blooming all the way up until we closed down the trials. And these are getting established. They've only been planted since June, but I expect they'll perform really, really well in the future. Pink Panther, great name, really strong plant, and I've grown this over the winter at home, so I know it's hardy in Pennsylvania. So in front of me, we have two uh, echinacea from the Artisan Collections, Red Ombre and Soft Orange. And I will say that this Red Ombre is true to its name. Closer to the center, it's a little bit darker and fading out. It's really, really a good performer. And this Soft Orange, I think, would play nicely in fall gardens with uh, container mums and ornamental peppers. A really wonderful series of echinaceas that we've been growing in the past and now currently are the sombreros from Darwin Perennials. So here's a really nice strong orange called Fiesta Orange, and here's a lovely pink uh, rosada. The colors are very intense as the flowers come out, and behind me we have Poco Yellow, which is a nice compact form with a really strong yellow color. These will probably do very well as their cousins, the sombreros that we've grown in the past years have all been very successful. One of the interesting series of echinacea that we've seen in this program is the Moods, M-O-O-D-Z, which was brought out by Hilverde Couge, and now it's Hilverde Florist as they merged with Florist Holland. But that's okay. These are really interesting plants. They have a really uniform habit. These are on their third year. This is their last winter in the program, and then they will be retired. So we did have a couple losses, yes, and uh, the form and the habit, like little soldiers, they're really, really uniform. So this echinacea here from Plants Nouveau, it's actually a numbered variety, 2016-24. Uh, um, you know, it's a really good plant. It's stayed true to its size. We haven't had a lot of spreading, which is always a challenge in our echinacea beds. But really, this color, this burgundy color, is fantastic. Um, a lot of new flowers coming on here at the end of um, August, and I think it's gonna—it's a really good performer. And this one will overwinter one more time for us, and then we'll pull them out. Here's a wonderful echinacea from Terra Nova Nurseries. 
This plant is on its last winter in the program and it has been reliably hardy. We haven't lost any plants, no real attrition over the winter. And we have some tough winters. We got these roller coaster temperatures which freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw. So it's a tough zone for testing. But Caramia, this wonderful yellow, has bloomed and bloomed. It started up in June and it's still going really well here in the middle of August. This is a wonderful uh, Eupatorium from Darwin Perennials. And I'd like to remark on how diminutive the stature is. We've tried growing some of these other varieties that were supposed to be compact. This one truly is. Last year this thing was only 10 inches tall and look at it in year two. Beautiful, covered with flowers and a very, very compact habit. Eupatorium euphoria ruby. I highly recommend it. And here's a nice little gem. This is Gallardia firewheels from Gelido. It's blooming the first year from seed and it has these wonderful flare tip petals where the uh, ray flowers would have normally been on a standard Gallardia. So very nice presentation, lovely habit, nice and compact, and I trust this plant will come through the winter very well. Here are a couple of really interesting grasses that came to us from intrinsic perennials in Illinois. And when Brent Horvath sends us a plant, I stand up and take notice. He doesn't enter a hundred plants, but the plants he's entered over the years are very, very good. Now here's a Budaloa, which is in the grama grass family or group, and it's got this wonderful side uh, sort of bearing of the inflorescence. It's really a cool form. This is native to the west, western states, the prairie states. And then here's this cool penicetum, which is love and rockets, and it's got these wonderful dark inflorescences, and as they mature, they fade a little bit to sort of a lighter brown. Really a nice, nice presentation real uniform. So here's another really great grass and again this happens to come from intrinsic perennials in Illinois. This is uh, Penicetum allopecuroides yellow ribbons and it has this really nice yellow color to it. It's stronger in spring and the early parts of summer but we still have enough of that coloration here to make an impact. Uniform, no losses, a really good performer. So here is a lovely Helen's flower from Plants Nouveau. Heleniums are great late season bloomers, <clears throat> and this is a particularly strong colored one, but I'd like to draw your attention to the compact stature of this plant. <clears throat> uh, when I first met Heleniums, they were usually in around three feet or more in height, so these wonderful smaller forms are really great for gardens, and just look at the blooming capacity on this plant. Really, really nice. So this uh, Helenium salsa from Plants Nouveau is actually uh, in its second year here. Uh, so went through two winters, performing really well, great mounding habit, um, a lot of flower power, a really gorgeous orange burgundy color, um, winner in my book. So Kinsler has sent us two Heliopsis, um, first year flowering, looking fantastic. Um, in front of me, this is a numbered variety. I really, really like this because it has an orange center and has really great dark, almost purplish foliage. Um, and I think it's just a really good balance between flower color and foliage. And here on my right is Punto Rosso Compact, which is, it is very compact. It has really good flower mounding, um, a lot of pollinator activity in front of us. And I just think it's gonna perform well. Um, so let's see how it does in the next couple years. There are indeed a lot of heuchers on the marketplace. But here are three really wonderful ones. This is Dulce Wildberry from Walters Gardens. In the middle here we have Grande Black from Terra Nova, a really nice plant. And over here, Grande Amethyst, which I like that color a lot. But these plants have done very well for us. This is their second year. They've gone through two winters, coming up on the third. And nothing to complain about. Really good uniformity, a really good presentation. Jayberry Nursery has two hardy hibiscus this year in the Tama series under number. One, this lighter green foliage with this big dark pink magenta leaf uh, flower. It is, it's huge, like it's probably bigger than my head. And then in front of me, this darker purple leaf with a lighter pink uh, flower. And really something that's really, really stunning is these bracts on the petals themselves before they flower. 
So I'm standing amongst this hardy hibiscus, summerific evening rose, and yes, this plant is probably four and a half foot tall. I'm only 5'2". It's wonderful. It has this really great dark foliage and a wonderful magenta flower, and it is true to its name, it is prolific. So this Leucanthemum birdie from Doom and Orange in front of me, I just really felt like it needed to be highlighted here. Um, our interns cut it back probably about a week ago and it's already starting to throw new flowers. It is a great performer, good uniform size. I mean, and it's probably two and a half, three foot tall here um, in, in August. Two plants we're really excited to be having in our program are these penstemons from Terra Nova. And while they bloomed back in May and June, <clears throat> they were stellar and absolutely loaded with flowers, as you can see in a picture coming up. But they do have this wonderful red foliage to them. Uh, this is Dakota burgundy and this is Dakota verde. Even so, it still has some red pigmentation in the foliage and just totally reliable as perennials, extremely hardy. No problem over the past two years and I don't expect that in spring of 2021 either. Great plants. So in front of me here is Rebecca Glitters Like Gold from Intrinsic Perennials. And just looking out over it, there's at least five or six types of pollinators hanging out. But a really big point of this one is a whole lot of less leaf spot fungus, which is really important here in the mid-Atlantic where we have really humid weather. Um, but uh, other than that, it's just gorgeous, so much color true winner in my book. A really great salvia that's shown up this year is uh, Midnight Rose here from Doom and Orange. It's a strong, strong rose pink, a little darker than some that we've seen in the past. Nice compact habit. And here it is, third week of August, blooming quite well for this time of year. Can't wait to see this in the spring. It's probably going to knock my socks off. In addition to our sun perennials, we are also trialing some items in shade and this is a 50 percent shade cloth structure where these plants are being tested and everything is grown in ground here now here's a wonderful set of brunera that we have uh, from plants nouveau this is silver heart silver heart and sea heart and <clears throat> these two plants have really strong silver markings they also have a thicker leaf cuticle which is supposed to guard against foliar nematodes. We haven't tested for the foliar nematodes, okay. But in terms of growth and bloom and performance, these two plants have done very well for us. I'm really delighted to have the uh, ferns that are being tested here in the shade. This is Maris's hardy maidenhair fern. And these plants come to us from Casa Flora in Texas. But this one is a very delicate habit uh, we did have a little attrition on this one clump, but um, most they're all present and most of them are doing very well. So it's a nice delicate texture for a shady garden setting and has performed very well for us here at the research station. A number of wonderful dryopterists were entered as well by uh, Casa Flora of Texas. And they're just really great garden plants in my opinion, the whole genus is wonderful. Some are not so good for gardens unless you have an aquatic setting from our native uh, dropters in Pennsylvania. But we have this array of these wonderful species here and cultivars and they actually are almost unique for their individual application in gardening. This is the Dixie fern over here. They're all dropters. Wood fern is the, is the uh, common name. But this is the Dixie wood fern over here. That's the biggest one that in, in the series that we're growing. And then over here we have the parsley male fern, which is very compact and would be well suited to an intimate uh, garden application and along with shady walk, something like that. I've grown dropters for many years, mostly our native species, love them, and I haven't met a dropterist that I don't like. One of my favorite groups of ferns that gardeners and, and growers can use in their, in their product line is the ethereum. And from Casa Flora, we have five cultivars of Ethereum related distantly to our native lady fern, uh, but these actually have uh, oriental germplasm in them in their background. And what's what really nice about the Ethereums is while other ferns that are native to Pennsylvania, 
send up one flush of growth in their fronds per year and that, that's all you get. The ethereums keep throwing new fronds all season long, which makes them look particularly fresh and vigorous. We're trialing two hellebore selections from Skagit Gardens in Washington. And <clears throat> this is the Ice and Roses series. And these things are really well uh, blooming in, in season. Of course, now at this time of year, the blooms have long gone, but uh, they have a nice stiff foliage, serrated margins on the leaf, and really have done a nice job growing uh, for us. These are on their third year, so this will be the last season that we're looking at. From our friends in Terra Nova Nursery, we have these Heuchera Northern Exposure Series. We've tested some of these in the past, but currently we're testing Northern Exposure Purple and Northern Exposure Black. Uh, both are very strong colors, very uniform habits, and this series has done very well for us over the years. These are serving their second year, and so this winter will be their final uh, part of the evaluation go through the winter and see how they come back in spring and then they will be retired from the program. Also from Terra Nova Nurseries we have this wonderful Heuchera Lemon Supreme, not part of the Northern Exposure series, but Lemon Supreme is being tested in shade and often with these yellow and yellow green cultivars they're a little sun susceptible and can get scorched leaves when planted in full sun. If you've grown citronelle you know what I mean. Anyway, they're very nice compact plants going into their first winter this year and we'll be having them with us for another three winters. Also we have from Must Have Perennials, a division of Greenleaf Aris, this wonderful Steel City which has an interesting leaf pattern. It's got this red color as it comes out and then it turns a little bit lighter <clears throat> as the leaf matures. Very uniform habit. Can't wait to see this thing flowering next season. Also in the Heuchera group is this wonderful plant from Proven Winners and Walters Gardens. This is Dolce Toffee Tart and it's got this wonderful uh, goldish color to the foliage. It comes out with a little lighter color and then slowly turns into this uh, greenish pattern that you see here. Real interesting looking plant. It bloomed pretty well for us this year and we're looking forward to seeing how well it blooms in year two. One of the really fantastic groups of plants we have for very early spring bloom is Pulmonaria. And here's a wonderful cultivar that was sent in by uh, Plants Nouveau. It's called Lisa Marie. It has a really strong red flower when in bloom. And the foliage is, is wonderful. I don't really like the common name that's applied across the whole genera, Spotted Dog. It sounds a little bit uh, less than appealing. But the Pulmonaria, or another common name is Lungwort, does very well in Pennsylvania, and this cultivar has performed really nicely for us.